When it comes to setting up a snowboard, there are only two main adjustments that need to be made. The angle of your bindings and the width of your feet. This is what is known as your snowboard stance. And although there are only these two attributes, there are numerous options for both. So in this video, I will be explaining exactly how to determine your stance and mount your bindings so you can confidently set up your board without any issue. Before we get into the explanation of stance options, it is important to know that stance is mainly a preference for each snowboarder. So while I'll give you the best guidelines for setting up your stance, understand that you may find yourself tweaking these things over the years to find what works best for you. Even after you have found your perfect stance, it is common for riders to change their stance over time as their riding style evolves. Now let's start it off with the width of your stance. The best way to think about width is to ask yourself, what is the most athletic stance you can have which will help you drive the most power? It's easy to think about it while visualizing how you would stand if you were to hit a baseball. If your stance is too narrow, you will not drive enough power and you'll be unbalanced. If your stance is too wide, you sacrifice the mobility of other body parts like your hips while diminishing the driving power as well. So to have the most dynamic mobility and power, you want something right in the middle. But where exactly is that for you? Well, there are a few ways to determine your measured width. While this might sound odd, measuring your lower leg can give you a pretty spot on number. What you'll do is plant your bare foot on the floor and measure up to the top of your bent knee. For me, this is exactly 22 inches, which is exactly the stance that I ride. Another thing you can do is jump off your couch and land in a snowboard stance. Once you have landed, have somebody measure the width of your feet from the center of each foot. This will give you an idea of what a comfortable stance would be if you're expecting to be taking on big landings. Lastly, you can judge your stance based off the determined reference stance, which will be called out on your snowboard. This is helpful if you are just slapping your bindings on without much care, but I don't fully recommend basing your stance on the reference width. This is because most companies' reference will vary greatly even in the same sized board. From my experience, measuring your lower leg will give you the best idea for your width, or use a combination of the three I just explained to get an average measurement. Okay, now let's talk about stance angles. When you take a look at your bindings, you will notice a few numbers and markings. Depending on your binding, these will either be on the actual binding or on the disc. Starting at zero, each marking represents three degrees. Because of this, binding angles are only calculated in multiples of three. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, and so on. The only binding that will be slightly different with angles is a Burton EST binding. For these, snap the white plastic tongue into the channel. Now you can rotate the binding to your preferred angle. Regardless of if you are setting up your board regular or goofy, a binding rotated towards the nose of the board will be referred to as a positive angle, and a binding rotated towards the tail of the board will be referred to as a negative angle. When mentioning angles, the front foot is the angle number you'll say first. For instance, this is what a stance of positive 15, negative 15 would look like. And this is what a stance of positive 18, positive 9 would look like. If this is your first time deciding on your angles, don't feel overwhelmed because this will just be the beginning of you figuring out what is comfortable and it is easy enough to change over time. But here are some angle recommendations based on riding style. For a first time setup, try positive 12, negative 9. This is a comfortable stance to start with, and having a negative angle on your back foot will help torsionally flex the board and help drive power. And while it might sound odd to have your feet pointed in opposite directions, this is generally the way most people stand on their feet throughout the day. For a freestyle riding style, try positive 15, negative 15. This allows for a symmetric stance when riding forward or backward. For a stance that favors powder riding, try positive 15, zero. This will give drive off a perpendicular angled rear foot because when you're in deep snow, you'll be having more weight on that back foot. And if you want a stance that is ideal for carving, try positive 18, positive six. Having both feet facing forward, or what is referred to as posi posi stance, will give you better performance for initiating, transferring, and exiting a carve. Now that you have your width and angles determined, it's time to mount your bindings to your board. With measuring tape, eye up the inserts you will use for your determined width. As best you can, find this distance that uses corresponding center holes. For example, my width lines up from the third hole in on both sets of inserts, so this is what I will use. Always line up the width starting from the inner set of holes to ensure your stance is centered on the board. This is where the reference stance on the board will come in handy. Use this as a starting point to base your width off. Keep in mind that your width will be measured from the center of each binding. So once you found the proper inserts, mark them with a Sharpie. Depending on your bindings and the inserts, you may not be able to get the exact measurement of your width, but get as close as you can. 
With union bindings, you can micro adjust to get the perfect alignment from side to side. For EST channel boards, you will see a marked reference location. Base your bindings off of this. For these boards, you can find the exact measured width of the reference stance called out on the board. And then each marking on this board is half an inch. So it is easy to mount your bindings without a measuring tape to determine your width. Now that your width is marked, set your disc to the proper angles by aligning the arrow to the desired number on your binding. When screwing down your bindings, loosely put all four screws in before tightening down. Afterwards, tighten each screw as far as you can. Make sure to use only a number three screwdriver when doing this so as not to strip the screws. You'll not want to use a drill when mounting bindings either as you could risk forcing the screws too far. For Burton channel boards, remove the rubber stopper from the channel and insert the metal female piece. Make sure to only use the provided black screws when mounting to a channel as these are shorter in length. Using the longer silver screw will put a dimple through your base and void your board's warranty. And now you're all set to rip. If you have any questions about what makes bindings different from each other, watch this video right here where I cover everything you need to know about bindings. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.